at uh, learningengineer.com. My name is Michael Langdon, and on one of my previous posts on my website, I talked about creating a audiovisualizer for um, autistic children. So it's right here. Uh, recently, my wife found this article at MSNBC entitled "Colorful Way to Better Autistic Kids' Social Skills," which led me to an article called "Encouraging Speech." and vocalization in children with autism spectrum disorders and my son has autism so I thought after I read the article I would I would try to create one similarly obviously I'm not going to do it exactly but to see how fast I could do it and I thought that flash would be particularly useful for this because one of the parts of this is that you vocal you visualize the speech while at the same time echoing it back and if you've ever used like macromedia breeze or the microphone and flash you'll know that it specifically echoes back to you so flash is particularly i thought useful for this um, and so i looked around <coughs> and there's a couple of visualizers but the one i really looked at was at a site called go to and learn by a gentleman by the name of Lee Brimlow and he has some really excellent um, tutorials on his website go to and learn that show you how to do flash and all lots of other stuff but the one that I really picked up on was the sound spectrum display here and he actually shows you how to do this um, he uses a, a line and he fills like a, a wave thing here and it flexes back and forth I didn't particularly like that nor did I think it, it the best visual way to present things. Um, so I need to switch here. There we go. And so, <coughs> excuse me, here we are in action or flash. And what I've done is I've just basically made a single frame here. Uh, so if I go to my timeline, you'll see there's just a single layer. This is just a stage, it's a black stage, there's nothing here except that, and of course, some action script. So I'm going to go into the action script that's in the first frame, and I'm going to show you what I got here. Um, basically, you set up a microphone variable, um, you set up your security for your microphone. So this is going to, basically when I run the program, it's going to bring up the microphone dialog box within Flash that says, do you want to have access to your microphone? And then we're going to set the loop back. That means it's going to send it uh, send it out to the, the speakers. And then, of course, you can actually use echo suppression and suppress the echoes. But I don't want to suppress the echoes in this. So um, I want to put this as false. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. Now, these next two here, these are simply setting a variable SW for stage width, SH for stage height. And what it does is it just finds the center of the stage. Um, then we need to add an enter frame, add event listener. So I'm adding an event listener to the stage uh, with the enter frame event. And if you want to control this or make this slower and faster, that's where you would set your number of frames per second to make this slower and faster. Now you can also, instead of using an enter frame event, use a timer if you want it to be a little faster, like if you're running a, an EXE application. So if you bring this into Flash and then make a projector out of it, which simply means you're making an application out of it instead of a web application, it can run faster if there's a timer. So, But for now, I'm just using an enter frame event. It's plenty fast. It's going to operate at 120 frames per second, so it should be good. And then we start the function. <coughs> and so this is stage enter frame. That's the function that the event listener calls. And then this is the function that the event listener is calling. So if you don't understand all this, I will be posting a flaw on my website uh, with the zipped up application and the text. And I can probably just put this text right on my page because obviously there's not very much of it here. So the first thing I do is I'm calling a variable number and I'm getting the activity level um, of the audio that's coming in. Now, normally if you were doing 
a piece of music or something, you would have the compute spectrum. And so, and that does a whole bunch of stuff as far as audio is concerned. However, it doesn't do the microphone. which will probably be a change made later by Adobe but in this case we have to use the activity level to create the visualizer and I'm multiplying it by four so it makes it bigger most of what Adobe does is based upon like a zero to one uh, type of range and then you have to multiply it to make it bigger and then I just had put a trace in here to trace uh, these numbers to see what I was getting for activity levels and then um, I'm going to set a graphic. So I'm graphics clear, graphics begin, fill, and then, and basically this is just a random color. If you wanted to, you could actually make it so that if it gets bigger, it gets a certain color. If it's medium size, it's a certain color, and if it's small, a certain color. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that right now because I just want to get the basics of this done to show you how it works. And then <coughs> we simply draw a circle. And so what we have here is x y so this is the two locations from up here remember this is the middle of our stage and then the number a tie associated to the activity level and that's it and so when I talk into the microphone if I close this and I talk it run this and I talk into the microphone close allow you'll see that it naturally expands as I talk and so you can visualize a voice while at the same time it's going to be echoed back. When I first tried this with my son, he yelled into the microphone, saw the visualizer, saw it feed back to him, and then did it two or three times. Uh, and he plays with it about uh, five to ten minutes each day, um, sitting at the computer, and he really seems to enjoy it, but, you know, that's just anecdotal. That's my story. Um, the study that I showed you earlier, they actually did, I believe it was five children, and I'm sure more studies will come down the way as these types of programs progress. But if you're interested in seeing this, uh, like I said, I'm going to put a FLA file on learn.learningengineer.com along with the text of the action script that I used. All right. Have a good day. Bye.